Hi everyone, welcome to a new MagFed loadout video. It's been a while since I've done one of these and in the last few years I've updated and changed quite a bit of my equipment. I've also gained a few new pieces, so let's take a look at all of it. The assault vest that I'm using here is still my Condor Gunner's Plate Carrier. This is about five years old now, but it's still working really well. It's got a triple stack of mags on the front, and as I'm mostly a left-handed shooter, it's got another triple stack on the right-hand side. The left-hand side of my rig has a die tactical twin locking pod pouch. The first pouch here contains a spare air bottle to allow me to refill in game, as well as a squeegee for cleaning out my barrel. The clips on these combined with the Velcro make these pouches very secure, very important for an air bottle which is expensive. The second pouch here you can see, I carry a spare pot of ammo for long and drawn out games. The top of my front plate here has my utility pouch on it. This serves a multitude of roles but in this instance it carries my pull through squeegee. At other times it may well also have spare o-rings, allen keys in it and the front part of it may well have a map. The spare section next to the utility pouch, as you can see, has my 10 round sticks in. The 10 round sticks make reloading in game much faster and I'll always go through those before I go through my pot of ammo on my left hand side. The final piece of my front plate here is my carabiner clip. This allows me to use my grenades much faster as I can simply hook them on, rip and throw. The back plate here has my name tape across the top here as well as a magazine dump pouch fitted at the base. This can comfortably hold about four mags before it starts to overflow. I also have an extra magazine pouch on my back here. This will be used to hold a radio if I'm ever running one in game. To carry my smoke grenades in game, I use a drop leg plate carrier. This is essentially just a panel of extra molly weaving that you can attach things to. Each pouch can hold two burst grenades or one EG-18X. These plates work by using these two straps here to attach around your leg and the clip at the top here which hooks into your belt. My goggles are a fairly recent upgrade. Originally I was using a pair of Dye i3s but I decided to upgrade to the i5s. These are much more comfortable and the lens retention system is also better. The lenses themselves are the i4 lenses so they're very readily available. The Hero 4 silver camera here is also a recent upgrade and I've got an aluminium low profile mount for it. In addition to the new set of goggles, I've also gone for a new set of spare lenses. In this instance, I've gone for a pair of yellow tinted lenses. These are useful in the summer where it's very bright. Now, onto the markers. My primary magped marker is a Milsig M17 Elite. You can see this one here has got the mock suppressor, a standard 12 inch barrel on it, the metal magazine well, an ergonomic submachine gun pistol grip, and with recent problems with Milsigs, it's got the upgraded bolt and the upgraded trigger group. The magazines that I use are the standard 20 round square head mags. These ones have had some modifications made. You'll notice that they've got machine button head screws in rather than the standard self tappers. This makes them much stronger and the magazine shells last much longer. Now, one of the other markers that I've got for shooting round ball is a T15. Big shout out and thank you to Tex for this. He was the one who got this for me. You'll also notice that this is a Tiberius Arms T15, not a first strike one. It's also got an apex barrel and a slim line handrail. The magazines are also the standard 20 round square mags, however, they've also got the upgraded follower release on them to make sure they feed properly. This is a really nice piece and I'm looking forward to using it in some future games. It's also the first mark that I've ever owned that's got an apex barrel on it, so I'm looking forward to trying that out. Now, onto the fun gun. This is my sniping platform. Originally this was a Mil6 CQC, but I've rebuilt it as a DMR specifically to shoot first strikes. It's got a mock suppressor, a key mod rail, a 13 and a half inch rifle barrel, a bipod, and it also uses Gryzen mags. These are specifically designed to feed first strike rounds and they're much shorter. This gives it a much sleeker and lower profile and allows me to lie flat when I'm shooting. This marker also has the ergonomic submachine gun pistol grip which I've teamed with a rubber shooting support. The stock on it is a tactical compact stock which fits much tighter and just like with my previous Milsig, it has the upgraded bolt and trigger group. My scope is also mounted using an angled riser and the optic itself is a four times magnification. Now one of the things that I've been meaning to get for quite some time is a sidearm and thanks to a good friend of mine, Dr. Rush, I now have one. This is an HTR50 revolver which I mount using a thigh holster. You can see I put a tack light on it to make sure it fits in the holster a bit better. This revolver fires 50 caliber paintballs and is fed using a six shot cylindrical magazine. However, because it's a 50 caliber pistol, it only has an effective range of about 10 meters. That said, it's excellent for close quarters work. 
The tack light also improves its usefulness inside of buildings, especially with the strobe function. Normally when I run this pistol I have about 4 cylinders for it. So this is my entire loadout. You can see that I team all my equipment with a multicam camouflage scheme. I've got quick access to all my magazines on the right hand side and all my equipment on the left. I've got the equipment on my sides pushed towards the front to give me better access to it. Going for single stack magazine pouches also means that my equipment isn't as bulky. I've also got a weapon sling that hangs underneath my left arm. As I mentioned earlier, I'm a left handed shooter, but I can switch it up when necessary. The weapon sling itself attaches using a ring hook on the side of the marker. Having the sling attached to my weapon prevents me from being able to switch hands effectively during game, so I always detach myself before game on. However, it's very useful for keeping my hands free when I need them. Now some people don't like having their dump pouch on their back as it makes getting access to it a bit more difficult. I find that it's not a problem. Having it on my back also leaves the front of my rig open for more important equipment, and overall it makes reloading faster. Now the gloves that I've got are fairly typical of paintball and gloves, they've got reinforced knuckles. However, unlike a lot of gloves of this type, the knuckles are not made of plastic, they're made of rubber. This makes them more flexible and less likely to shatter when hit. I wear my grenade pouches on my left hand side. It gives me quick access to them, and with the clip hooked into my belt, it prevents the plate from slipping from left to right. Well, that's my entire loadout. Let me know how well balanced you think it is in the comments down below, and I'll see you all next time.